In 2003, we discovered the government's baby DNA repository and newborn genetic registry. Since that time, our organization has fought to secure parent consent and to protect the genetic privacy and DNA property rights of newborn citizens and their families. We're here today because August 1st was the third anniversary of the Minnesota Genetic Privacy Law. On August 1st, 2006, the state genetic privacy law became effective, protecting the genetic privacy rights of all citizens, regardless of size, color, age, or any other human distinctions. This protection includes protecting the genetic privacy rights of newborn babies. That said, we're here today to bring the public's attention to the fact that the Minnesota Department of Health has refused to follow the genetic privacy law in their collection, storage, use, and dissemination of baby DNA collected by law for the sole purpose of newborn genetic screening. The blood for newborn genetic screening is collected initially by the hospital. It's used, it used to be called the PKU test. The baby's heel is pricked shortly after birth. Five drops of blood are squeezed onto a special filter card, and the card is sent directly to the Minnesota Department of Health for genetic testing. While the testing itself is supported by many parents, the government's storage, use, and sharing of baby DNA for genetic research without parent consent is not, as shown by a new study published in the July 11th edition of Public Health Genomics called, Not Without My Permission, Parents' Willingness to Permit Use of Newborn Screening Samples for Research. The study finds that if permission is obtained, 76.2% of parents were very or somewhat willing to permit use of their baby's blood specimen for research. However, if parent consent is not obtained, only 28.2% of parents were somewhat or very willing to participate in research. Approximately 70% were somewhat or very unwilling to participate without consent. When it comes to government storage of baby DNA, only 38.5% were willing to have the state store their baby's blood specimen indefinitely. While the, study show, while the study shows that many parents may be willing to permit storage and participate in genetic research, it's very clear that most parents are not willing unless they have been asked for permission first. In Minnesota, informed written parent consent is required for government storage and research using newborn DNA and genetic test results. It's the law. Consent for storage and research is Minnesota state law. However, the Minnesota Department of Health has refused to get consent, as was underscored by the ruling of an administrative law judge in March 2007, and by the department's subsequent annual attempts to undo the consent requirements in 2007, 2008, and 2009. However, because of the strong outpouring of public concern, the department has failed to change the law. Despite that failure, they continue to refuse to comply with the law. Not only do they not secure the required written informed consent from parents, they have not even created a parent consent form for hospitals to use. It is now three years and three days since genetic privacy rights became law in Minnesota where approximately 200 babies are born every day. Every day, despite the judge's ruling, the Minnesota Department of Health collects and stores newborn DNA and genetic test results. Since at least 1997, they have used and shared this newborn genetic information for genetic research. In short, the Minnesota Department of Health, uh, let me give you a brief history first. Um, in 1986, prior to passage of the state genetic privacy law, the department began storing and using newborn genetic test results indefinitely. No law allowed it. In July 1997, the, de the, the department began storing baby DNA indefinitely. No law allowed that either. Both were and continue to be a violation of the individual's Fourth Amendment rights, and today, the storage and use also violate the state genetic privacy law passed in 2006. To date, the DNA of more than 825,000 children is stored in the state's DNA repository. There are more than 1.5 million children in the state's genetic registry, and the genetic information of more than 52,000 children has been used for genetic research, all without consent. In short, the Minnesota Department of Health has claimed government ownership of the unique genetic code of every citizen at birth, regardless of what the law says. The intimate, detailed, personal information of every baby, their individual genetic blueprint, has become state government property for current and future health department activities. 
As we stand here today, the Minnesota Department of Health's third attempt to repeal genetic privacy rights at birth is waiting for a vote again in 2010. The 2000 bill remains alive today. The 2009 bill remains alive today. So as state health officials move now into the fourth year of violating the genetic privacy law, our organization has today brought together just one of the many concerned families, as well as several other organizations that support requiring the state health department to comply with the state genetic privacy law. The Constitution secures the individual right against government intrusion into one's person, house, papers, and the facts without a warrant. With respect to one's person, this is modernly referred to as the right to privacy. In Minnesota, a right to privacy ends with birth. The most elemental makeup of a person is one's DNA. While altruistic research benefits may arguably be had through a fully consensual process, the violation of this requirement continues despite law in Minnesota. We ask the governor to ensure compliance in this matter. Liberty requires both the rule of law and the privacy of a person. We are concerned because of the potential uses and abuses of information obtained through health department storage of newborn DNA in newborn genetic test results. Our genetics are a very private matter. We're concerned that DNA test results obtained from blood samples taken from newborns will be used against the child, against future children, and against the parents. Each sample can be linked to an individual child and that child's family. Bioethicists are concerned that genetic test results could be used to discriminate against a person by using the, the results to make inferences about future health or ability, possibly denying educational opportunities, employment or health insurance to individuals with certain genetic test results. We're also concerned that these government-retained test results could be used to pressure parents not to have subsequent children and to possibly deny health insurance for the child tested as well as future children. We call on Governor Puglenti to require the Health Department to comply with the informed written consent requirements of the Minnesota Genetic Privacy Law as they relate to the storage and use of newborn DNA and genetic test results. Thank you. We believe this is a very legitimate privacy right and interest on the behalf of parents, on behalf of their children and families, and we believe the, governor, or the government should, should honor that. Um, we believe having written informed consent obviously gives parents the option of providing that information to the state, but we believe that this law should be honored and recognized by uh, those in our government, and when they fail to and when they take action which flies in the face of what is a clear directive from the legislature that raises other concerns about future abuse of where that may be. So we believe that uh, parents have the right and can exercise that right to provide this information, but it should be protected and reform informed consent, uh, written informed consent should be required. And uh, we ask the Department of Health to honor that the law as it's currently stated. The Minnesota Department of Health clearly thinks that it is above the law and doesn't have to abide by, abide by the law as the rest of us do, and that it might be indeed outside constitutional limits, and we just disagree with that. So thus we call on Governor Pawlenty to protect the genetic privacy and the DNA property rights of all citizens, including every newborn baby and their family. The rights of citizens and the integrity of state government is what's at stake here. And so on behalf of concerned Minnesotans and families and all the organizations in this room and everyone that they represent, we call on Governor Pawlenty to take immediate steps to require the Minnesota Department of Health to comply with the informed written consent requirements of the 2006 Minnesota Genetic Privacy Law. Thank you.